<laughs> Yeehaw! And yippee ki yay, perverts. It is I, the most electrifying man in co ops entertainment, the Necro Sexual! And welcome to this edition of One on One with the Grim One. Our guest joining us for this dark side chat is the original death metal cowboy joining us from Botswana. This is Mr. Voltra Thrust from the death metal band Overthrust. Hey, hello, man. How are you, Dad? Thanks for the opportunity, man. Looking forward to the interview. Thank you. As you can see, you death metal cowboys definitely have the best style. So I wore my cowboy hat for the occasion. I'm going to take it off now because when you guys dress up like cowboys, you look cool. Uh, when I dress up like a cowboy, I look like Brett Michaels after watching The Crow. So <laughs> that's enough of that for now. But, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. My hat is off to you, sir. So thank you uh, for going one on one with the grim one. And what that means, Mr. Vulture Thrust, is every episode, our guest selects one album that holds a special place in their dark hearts. So let's get into it, baby. Tell us about the album you've selected to discuss. Uh, you know, since my childhood, uh, I think I'll live in dialogue in this album of Morbid Angel. Altars of Madness. Uh, I've so loved this metal yet. Uh, my uncles and my father were listening to it, so it actually inspired me. It's a really, really great, great album. There's some great tracks, and uh, I don't remember or think there's any weak track, and all of them are so good. Yes, indeed. Altars of Madness is an absolute game changer for death metal. I knew that that album was going to be a great one because right off the bat, the opening track, you have Immortal Rights, and it's really spooky because that song opens up with the main riff being played backwards. So anytime you play a song backwards, it makes it sound totally evil. And then you know that. And then it kicks straight off because as soon as the song starts, you got that clap. It sounds like a toilet bowl. So any band that could use a toilet clap in their music and still make it sound brutal is pretty fucking cool. <laughs> It's an, it's an old album. Uh, I think it's for the, the first uh, Movie Angel studio album from 1989. But it still sounds more and more brutal. Like, it's like a wine. You know, the, the more the ages go, the more it gets brutal. Uh, <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's like suffocation. What was the first time you heard Altars of Madness by Morbid Angel. Do you remember like your first impression of that album? Yeah, uh, it was back in 1996. Yeah, to be precise, it was 1996 when I first heard the album. Uh, when it played, I, I didn't know I didn't know the, the the name of the band because it was in a cassette from my uncle's collection. So I was still a young boy. There. So I kept on with Uncle Jim and said, like, what's the name of this band? They said it's Morbid Angel. Then from his, he used to have his collection locked up in some wardrobe. He unlocked, then he gave me the sleeve for the cassette. And then uh, this is Morbid Angel. I said, oh, that's great. Then he gave me the, the, the magazine, the old one. Then he said, yeah, this is the band. This is the band uh, from Tampa, Florida, USA. Oh. Then I started researching about the band uh, through the, the magazine. We were not too much into the guitar, so we didn't have access to it mostly. So I went through the magazine reading about it, then the lyrics and the cassette, and then I realized, oh, oh this is, makes sense. By then, uh, I, was, I was very, very in. So the first riff that has changed me is the riff from the suffocation, uh, that one. It really killed me then from there that is when i started developing the, the love for death metal because before i was just listening to motorhead metallica and this uh, old school bands iron media deflow part so when i immediately i left that one movie they said this is what i've been looking this is what i want it sounded so so extremely dangerous unique and so powerful so that is when I realized that oh, this album is great. And then the love of the band started from there until now. Indeed, Morbid Angel is a fine band uh, to evolve. That must have been something going from Def Leppard to listening to Morbid Angel and Suffocation, definitely stepping up your brutality game. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much. 
Yeah. So what was the first metal band that you listened to? It was Iron Maiden. Yeah. So like the, there was a lot of collection from my uncle and my father from Iron Maiden and uh, Motorhead then the Black Sabbath as well. Then the, the Judas Priest and then Devlop Party was just a little song there. So I like I grew up in an environment where my family members, most of them were metal heads and also some were cowboys, so they listened to metal riding horses at the cattle post. So uh, like most of the time they like uh, going out to drink and doing parties. So because I was a kid, I would be left uh, in the house. So I play music. In fact, when they left, they leave the music playing out. So I was like kind of attracted. Then I go there, in their rooms, then I listen to music until I had a choice to select from the the albums they had, then I checked them, exchanged the music, playing the whole day. When they come back later, they found me asleep uh, with the radio holes. So, uh, the, the Judas Priest and the, the Black Sabbath, yeah, they had something also, something unique. Like, the, 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 their kind of riffing, they were so heavy and extreme. And then the old Metallica. So, when the, the Dave Mustaine was part of the band, yeah, it was brutal. And I can certainly relate to that cowboy lifestyle of going out, drinking, and listening to music. So that's something I think we can both agree on there. In addition to heavy metal, you mentioned, and uh, your your country in Botswana seems like it has a really cool cowboy culture. So, like, what's your favorite cowboy music to listen to? Or country music, I guess. Yeah, but uh, not, not mostly country. But I used to listen to Dolly Patton because my mom was listening to it. So, and the, some other few, like the, the, the old man, uh, May Sorosten Pest, uh, Don Wheeler. So, my mother used to have a collection, and she also had uh, rock and roll classics, Boston, Boston. So, <laughs> like my mother used to had some, some classics. Like, I grew up in a, in a rock and roll and metal. Like everything is just around me. So the the cowboy culture it is there in Botswana. It's part of the culture. Uh, we're doing uh, plowing in the fields and then cattle rearing and we ride horses and then like stuff like that. So we spend uh, our times uh, in cattle posts and the plowing fields. So that like that's so cultural. Going back to more of an angel for a second uh, on altars of madness. Do you have a favorite song? Oh, yeah, my favorite song in, in Moby Angel is, is Suffocation. Mm. Uh, I really don't know why, why it's my favorite, but uh, it has something to, to there's, there's like a connection between it. Uh, the it plays like when I'm, I'm sleeping, I can wake up to the sound of it. When I'm feeling lazy and stuff, when it plays, I get activated immediately. And also blasphemy, yes, great one. Start with the like the, the shooting sounds. Yeah, <laughs> nonstop blast beats for the entire song. But yeah, I think that's something you and I can also agree on. You're a bass player. I'm a bass player. And suffocation, the Morbid Angel song, has a wonderful little bass solo in there. You know, one of the few moments in that album where the bass guitar comes through, and so that of course holds a special place in my four string loving heart. <laughs> Uh, one thing also that inspired me into Moby Angel, like uh, you know, the, the heavy way of uh, the dress code on stage is so so great. Uh, like the culture of dressing up on stage, looking brutal. And, uh, I also like the formation of a, a bassist, where a bassist is a vocal. So it's, it's some kind of inspiration to yeah. Like uh, I have so much connection with them. Like Moby the Angels album was recorded in the. Altars of Madness, recorded in December in 1988, and then released in May 12, 1989. Overthrust also recorded their debut studio album in December 2014. It was released in 15 May 2015. So some kind of similarities. <laughs> The numbers add up. <laughs> I've never used or thought of that term before, dress code, but it's funny to think about. But that's one thing that, of course, I admire uh, from what I've seen coming out of Botswana. You guys dress always to the nines. You guys really look the part of a bunch of crazed metalheads. So I love that. 
And I think that with heavy metal music, you know, the visual presentation should match the intensity of the sound too, whether it's like black metal style or thrash metal style or death metal, you know, find your own look. But I think that there is definitely an art uh, to presentation of looking the part. So uh, Morbid Angel, we're definitely doing that even back in the day, probably more so. Uh, in fact, you see old pictures from the 80s and uh, Trey used to slice his wrists and bleed on stage. So they were really fucking far out. <laughs> yeah, it was old school. It's really great. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't mess around. They don't, they're Florida men, you know, something about Florida. They're all a little bit uh, crazy over there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's how it is. <laughs> like, yeah, but, uh, the, the, the issue of uh, like, uh, dress code is heavy, dressing, pants, cowboy boots, and hands. Yeah. We take it uh, seriously, it's a subculture, like it's some form of identity. So uh, listening to heavy metal and then riding horses and some riding bikes, uh, attending shows, drinking together. So it's some form of uh, like a team building spirit together, like together with the cowboys riding horses, bikers, metal heads and bands, we come together, so united we play the shows. So, it's something that uh, like it's, it keeps up together. It's a form of identity that is well known uh, across Botswana. So um, there we have some of the guys who are so extreme as uh, dress coach. They are also part of the shows. They make form part of the shows when they come to the shows. Then we have the other guys like they dress just so simple, like t-shirts. They prepare t-shirts. For all the heathens and hell raisers yeah. who are watching from home. A word about Overthrust. Uh, your band has played Vak in Open Air. Uh, I think that that's a festival that every metalhead that plays in a band dreams to play, and you guys did it. And you released an album last year known as Suicide Torment that is totally brutal. So tell us in your own words, how do you describe the musical assault that is Overthrust? Overthrust, when we started, uh, like we just did whatever we did for passion from our hearts. Uh, we just wanted to express our feelings and the talent we got. Uh, this upcoming musicians by then around 2008, 9, 10, and then around 2010, the, the rehearsals were getting so intense. That, uh, our guitarist Spencer crossed one of the rehearsals after playing a meet of Satan. And then Spencer came and says, you know what? With this music of ours, I just see ourselves playing back and then. But then we never put that into mind that people you know they'd say, hey, Spencer, you are crazy, you dream so big. Then we let it go. So in 2011, we recorded our single Freedom in the Dark at Stux Diamond Studios in Aurone, Stux from Rust. So after releasing it, we uploaded it in the internet. It gets a very positive response all over, all over the world. And then in 2013, also through Stux, who recommended us. Uh, we played Metal for Africa, invited by Patrick Davidson and the Metal for Africa committee. Played shows there. And then in 2015, even without realizing, then uh, our now European manager, Sig and uh, Manuel and Sasha Brusam, uh, they invited us for International Summer Festival and Camp Nagel in Hamburg. And that is where everything started. When, when we were playing there and we could start to see that water is scan, and then they went to pitch us for, for back in, uh, back in the checked our music, they checked our links, and then Pebonet, the photographer from Spain, uh, the former photographer for Motorhead, he said, no, I know these guys. I even went to Botswana to check over trust to interview them. And then uh, we were invited for back end, and when we played there, we received extremely positive response across the world. We had, like in Facebook, about there were about 3,000 by the end by the evening of that, uh, after back end, we had uh, over 15,000 times. So it all started there. We started receiving uh, invitations again from Europe, uh, USA. And then 2017, we went to play Holland and Germany again. 2018, I went to Finland to represent over trust and put on a documentary there. So it all, we started getting uh, immediately after back end. You son of a bitch, you killed our brother. So tell us about your new album, Suicide Torment, 
the album and the person. Oh, great, yeah. Like, uh, we were supposed to release the album uh, titled Infected by Me, uh, with our then later drama, Suicide Torment, like Easy. So what happened in 2018, he was in a, a, at a public a pub, and then uh, there was a guy who was drunk. Uh, he hit about six people uh, in the process of um, hearing and running through people uh, uh, at uh, that bar. And then suicide was uh, among the crowd that was hit, and uh, unfortunately, he passed away in 2018 December. So, and then we we withdrew that album. Uh, then we did an album dedicating it for him, uh, an EP. Uh, then we titled the Suicide Torment in his memory. Uh, then it just tracks like uh, Kill the Bastard, directed to the guy who, did, who killed suicide. It was recorded in Abuloni by, by Lorraine Yoni, the guy in that village. And it was mastered and mixed by our, our, our label in Florida, by Jason Bunny at the Indian River Music Company. Yeah. Suicide Torment. It's a very killer uh, song, the title track, and I think that a lot of that raw emotion, especially knowing the backstory that you guys lived through with the loss of your friend, uh, it really comes through and makes for one of those really uh, iconic lyrics. You son of a bitch, you killed. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's a very popular song. They like it so much. So, yeah, it just specifically dedicated to expressing our anger towards the, the culprit. Yeah. The, the same album, the, the, the one that we'll be recording, uh, it will be in July next year, Picture by me, so it's just similar to it. It's almost uh, uh, like all is in line with Overthrust, the of songs. Yeah, so we were supposed to be record it uh, at my Stone Studio in South Africa in July, so we postponed it to July next year. Because our record label has to come up here. And of course, Mr. Vulture Thrust, you are the bass player and also the mouthpiece, the lead screamer and growler of Overthrust. So how did you hone your vocal style? Yeah, the, the, the love for, for, for old school death metal. Band. Actually, like I've said before, so it was an inspiration and growing in an environment where the underground music was being played. like. Uh, Moby Angel, it went well with ourselves, but the other members of the band, uh, they also listened to that deceit, uh, obituary, beta, and demolition. So we were actually trying to uh, fall on the footsteps of the legendary old school death metal bands. I should also mention to all the heathens and hell raisers watching at home, if you want to hear more brutal metal from Botswana, check out Overthrust on the Spart Records compilation, Brutal Africa, alongside some other bands like Rust, Crack Dust, Stain, I think PMA. We have a, a really very interesting uh, and unique uh, bands here in Botswana. Uh, the compilation Brutal Africa was a compilation of about six, if not seven uh, bands. We have Rust in the Metal Horizon, we have PMMA, Stain, uh, Over Thrust. So the compilation was done in 2014 by Spaz Records from Finland, uh, and then in September 2019, 2018, 2019, it was released. So there is an uh, an example of what we got in Botswana, but there's more. There's more bands to look out. Like we have a band like Better. <laughs> One of the old bands. Uh, they are, then we have Raven and Flesh in Botswana, which was started around 2015. Uh, I'm, I'm proud to confirm that uh, I, I, I saw the band rising up. I had my own contribution of advices, and the brothers were also close. I've invited them to most of our shows. So they are really well organized. Band and they are underground. They are very, very great, very underground. We have Remuda. Remuda has been existing a long time back, probably one of the oldest uh, from the band Bar and Bar. We also have Dust and Fire. Dust and Fire, we stay with them here in Akane. They play rock and roll too. And then we have the, one of the oldest again from Pigway in Botswana called Evergreen. Uh, Skin Flint is, has been there in the scene for a very long time. 
uh, one of the best. They have been touring lately a lot. Uh, before the pandemic, uh, they played so many shows in Europe and USA. They are also managed by the first Botswana rock band, uh, Noise Road, by Yves Sabrana, uh, the, 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 fa- the rock father of Botswana. They, they produced our first album, Desecrated This to Disease. It was recorded at uh, Metal Records by Ivo Sabrana uh, of Noise Road and uh, Joseph Sabrana from Skin Split. So the, 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 the metal scene is so like, so connected and uh, one so so brutal we have uh, other upcoming bands but they have just been there in the scene not currently they are rising we have the first uh, brutal technical brutal death metal a uh, one piece man band for now a uh, product of civic so uh, i think after this pandemic probably next year uh, we will be conquering the world with uh, our music uh, I would also like to mention that uh, Winter Mania, what Trust annual Winter Metal Mania is the sort of festival that we do. And that is where the African bands are mostly exposed because the show involves uh, other African bands uh, from outside of Botswana who come and join. And together we do the match and right against poverty, where the show also is attended by the internationals. From as far as Europe, USA, we have the media coverage from BBC, CNN, and the likes. Yeah. So yeah. tell us, what's on the horizon, the mental horizon, uh, for Overthrust and for yourself in the future? We, we, we actually, for this year, we had a, a line of activities. And with those activities, we were extremely sure that uh, we were going to meet our targets. Uh, we were supposed to have a USA tour. We were supposed to play Florida, we were supposed to play Florida, Tampa, and uh, Orlando, and the nearby cities. The show was organized by our record label, uh, Indian River Music Company, through Jason Banning. We had also uh, wanted to play a show in Angola, and uh, South Africa, and Mozambique. Uh, we had done the local tours, usually, uh, by end of the year, uh, that one is still there. Uh, Overthrust Botswana Metal Fest tour. We are going to do it also. So we, we were supposed to record our our studio second album, uh, Infected by Meat. Unfortunately, we didn't manage. We postponed it to next year. But we have recorded a, a single track that will be coming in next month in July. It's called Demon Grave. It's a, it's a killer one. We recorded at Milestone Studios when we were playing Metal for Africa in January in South Africa this year. So stay tuned for the for the single. It's, it's brutal, I'm telling you that one. The moment oh. we hear it, yeah, it's a killer. Based on how brutal Suicide Torment was, I'm getting a heavy metal heart on just thinking about the next transmission of brutality to come from Overthrust. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, our guitarist Spencer Trust, he also has a project uh, called the Rock Ara, like the execution of uh, culture, traditional or music, and then the, the classics from the modern day rock and roll. He is currently also uh, doing promoting metal, uh, like doing uh, classic shows for upcoming metal heads. He's teaching them a guitar. He also uh, a teacher for the guitar. So. He, he, we currently have about three to five metal heads who we are hoping soon they will be uh, starting their own heavy metal band. So they are currently playing, they are doing jump session with him. So I think uh, our target is that by next year, December, we should have plenty of metal heads that know how to play guitar and other instruments and so many bands upcoming. So we are currently grooming the scene through uh, music. We will soon, uh, maybe August, July, have our own uh, small studio and uh, office. Our target is to do some uh, regular gigs month end uh, where people come for free and we teach them about metal. So it's a school of metal. The overthrust <laughs> school of rock. <laughs> or should I say maybe the school of thrust? <laughs> yeah, school of rock. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Get thrusted with the Thrust Brothers from Overthrust. Well, I certainly, again, respect and admire you guys for being role models and 
building a new future of rabbit headbangers are going to keep it brutal in Africa and beyond. And tell the heavy metal heads who are watching at home, where can they go if they want to listen to more Overthrust? Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we are hopefully uh, and going to confirm by the end of the year that uh, next year, if, if the flights have been opened, that the pandemic is under control. We are probably in touch with our European managers, uh, Sasha Prusama and Manuel, for the European tour. And then uh, the USA tour is very obvious. Our record label and US agent Jason Van uh, had organized it actually. So we just postponed it to next year. So, in closing, what would you like to say to all the metalheads out there watching? Ah, uh, you know what? Uh, metalheads are so amazing. Uh, all over the world. I want to thank them on behalf of myself and Overthrust that they have always given support from the beginning. Metalists are so amazing. We have traveled and played in Europe uh, for the first time, so we started in 2016. We didn't know anybody, but uh, when we went there, we were welcomed like family, like we went to home. So, uh, we also went to play in other African countries, in Angola and in South Africa. The same, same, same attitude of metalhead, welcoming and loving, considerate. So I think it's, uh, it's a great thing in this global metal family. So metal family, you are so, so important. You are so amazing. We love you so much. Uh, let's keep rocking. Let's keep it metal forever and ever. What trust is there? Overthrust is currently uh, making more and more brutal music. We are keeping it extremely ugly, old school death metal, the true and dangerous. We are just keeping it that way. So let's keep it brutal. Keep it brutal indeed. So thank you, Mr. Vulture Thrust, for going one. <laughs> yes, I like that. Ugly, old school, brutal, and dangerous, baby. It's the words I can definitely live by. Thank you, Mr. Vulture Thrust, for going one. I'm one with the grim one to talk about. Yes. You're welcome. Stay safe. Enjoy meta.